Hi, my name is Aderemi Oguntoye. I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Adira Miyoguntoye is referred to amongst colleagues as the passionate advocate. This is due to his uncommon commitment to clients' needs at every stage of his advisory calling. Adiremi is a member of the Nigerian Bar Association. The International Bar Association advocates international and an active member of the International Law Section of the American Bar Association. He has attended several international conferences including the Gulf of Guinea Conference in the United Kingdom, the Corporate Council on Africa Summit in Washington DC and the recent editions of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Conference. He was specially invited by CWC UK Limited to the Gulf of Guinea Oil and Gas Conference in November 2010, where his paper presentation on the institutional framework under the Petroleum Industry Bill was well received by the international community in London. Adiremi is the senior partner of the firm, Oguntoye and Oguntoye. Welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Adiremi Oguntoye. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Now, Adiremi, your father was a renowned lawyer. And yeah. your stepmother, Justice uh, Adwala Ogutwe, was the second female judge in Nigeria. That's now, correct. please tell me about growing up in this household. Yes, it was really very challenging at the same time, very interesting growing up, uh, growing up with two legal or call it judicial giants. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's um, an upbringing of high expectation from you, the children. Mm. And um, I remember that uh, on many occasions, you know, we, we were made to realize that it's important to live up to certain standards, mm. certain societal standards, mm. of course, set by, the, by our parents. You know, my late father and my late mom, they were men and they, they were people of principles. You know, they have high standards of living. They believe the least of what is expected of their children, you know, is the highest standard of integrity and principle living. So it's, um, that's the challenge there. The interesting part is the fact that they were human after all. <laughs> so they joke with us, they play with us. At the same time, uh, you have all this um, human face to them. And the next moment, you know, I remember from school, uh, the driver and the orderly will pick us from school and we'll go straight to the high court, into the judges' chambers. In fact, sometimes the open court, and you see your mom right there, you know, adjudicating over cases and everybody's in awe. So it's actually very interesting on that angle as well. Mm -hmm. So it gave a very good balance and um, it was one of the areas where, you know, I can say that the upbringing shaped people like me. So definitely you looked up to um, your mom and your dad and of course the law profession was really attracted to you, hence uh, your interest. Absolutely. Now running a firm, uh, a law firm, is a business that seems quite conservative. How different is it from running any type of business? By the rules of the, of, of the professional conduct, we call it the rules of professional conduct in the legal profession, there are certain things we're not allowed to do. Because in Nigeria, you are not allowed to advertise, you're not allowed to project yourself, you're not allowed to make any sort of noise about you. Mm -hmm. you know, so what speaks for you, really, is your work. In Europe and in the United States, they've moved away from the rules of you cannot advertise, you cannot project yourself, you cannot do this, you cannot market. They've moved away. But in Nigeria, we're still as conservative as we were 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Though I can say clearly that the help of the World Wide Web and the Internet has helped some of us to find a way to put our names out there. Mm -hmm. But we're still, we're still very conservative. We're not like other businesses. Yes, and putting your name out there is what you do as you run uh, the firm Okuntoye and Okuntoye. This is a firm that was founded by your father in 1940. 
49. Precisely. Now, how difficult was it to fill into this big shoe? Extremely difficult, extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why, you know, I would agree with you that it's, it's been extremely difficult is because I had to spend a whole number of years, you know, undergoing what I call tutelage, mm -hmm. learning from other people. I was learning the trade, I was learning the business, I was learning the profession. Mm -hmm. That was why I spent about 12, 13 years working somewhere else in a big law firm and at the same time crossing into the entrepreneurial world as company secretary of a, of, of, of a quoted company mm -hmm. just to learn certain things in preparation for starting this law business or reviving my parents' legacy of mm -hmm. the law firm of Ogunte and Ogunte. I knew that was what I wanted to do. But I knew at the same time that to sustain it, it's important to learn. Mm. That's that's the way I went about it. And, and you must have learned really well because at age 35, yes. you were already company secretary of that quoted company, Absolutely. African Petroleum, now Fort Oil. Absolutely. Now it is on record that you reorganized the boardroom culture and instilled corporate governance into the fabrics of that organization. Absolutely. How did you achieve that? Well, when whenever you it's important to always have a plan in life and while you're moving towards your goal the set goals that you've you know put down for yourself the plans you've had the pr projections you've had the preparation you've had, you've had always propel you towards a particular area of life to, towards achieving certain things. So before I joined the Kodak company, I knew quite well that I was going to require a certain level of preparation. And I knew what I was getting into. And I knew that the company was at the phase of moving from, you know, changing, transforming from a, part a particular name to the other. And I knew that it wasn't just transforming by name change alone. I knew it was going to be a transformation in terms of culture, transformation in terms of business ideals, transformation in terms of philosophy. So I was prepared for that. So I took all of that preparation, you know, that I had gained, the experience I had gained in the practice world to the corporate world as company secretary. And I was able to achieve my own set out goal during a limited time. <laughs> okay, cool. Number 40, CEOs. Now, we currently have a lawyer as vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Great. What critical skills does a lawyer bring to governance, especially in a complicated entity like Nigeria? You know, the legal profession is very peculiar. We call it the noble profession. The nobility to start with is what prepares you for governance. The nobility is what gives you the requirement to live above board into society. There are certain things that some other professionals can get away with, that you as a lawyer, because you are presumed to know and that's why we call ourselves learned people. You're, you're presumed to know the do's and the don'ts in the society. Now, in a, in a country like Nigeria, where you have complicated issues, complicated issues ranging from corruption, ranging, ranging to you know, issues of security, to issues of um, you know, bad governance that we've experienced over the years, a lawyer is expected to sit back or to be in that position of knowledge, and not just knowledge, but the know-how of what the do's and the don'ts are. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the consequences of the do's and the consequences of the don'ts. Because ordinarily, a lawyer is expected, the society expects the lawyer to be above board. Mm -hmm. So for a person like the vice president, someone who has practiced law for over 30 years, I strongly believe that his years of practice, his years in private practice, his years as a lecturer and a professor, all these were preparation to ensure that the knowledge he brings to the table is actually the knowledge that is not just common, that is uncommon, but a knowledge that can be applied into governance and do things in the appropriate way, the way things are meant to be done. 
you're obviously a well-traveled man. Now, how has travel and interaction with diverse cultures, you know, enhanced and added value to your person? Well, I'll say that that has been one of the exposure is what I would define that as, you know, it has really helped me to see law practice, law business, and generally doing things, you know, in a different light. I recall that my first meeting or engagement with a client, you know, in Washington, D.C., uh, about nine years ago, I went into a law firm with a client, mm -hmm. and the law firm was, they occupied a 23-story building. And the entire 23-story building is, was filled with lawyers. They had well over 1,600 lawyers. Whoa. So at first, I said to them at the meeting that one of the partners of that firm, I said, your law firm owned this building? And they said, yes, one of their buildings. I said, interesting. <laughs> but I said to them, the second question was that, how many lawyers do you have globally? And the answer was, they have 2,600 lawyers globally. Wow. And I felt that was a corporation. Hmm. So coming back to Nigeria from DC, with that sort of exposure, that was my first time realizing, and of course, we see all these things on the internet, but I sat down there in a 23-story building. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt we haven't started. Hmm. Under 40 CEOs. Adiremi regularly provides corporate investigations and business intelligence reports on the reputation of Nigerian companies and individuals on multi jurisdictional issues for major consulting organizations in the United Kingdom and Europe generally. He has carved a niche for himself as a negotiator of wide-ranged contractual and concession agreements with a knack for commercial government instruments. He also led a team in advising the Nigerian Ministry of Petroleum Resources on legal and franchise agreements for the implementation for the Nigerian Gas Master Plan. Quite an impressive record, you may say, but even he may have failed on his way up. Now let's come back to you. Tell me about your failures as a leader. It took me a while to agree to this interview. It's part of my, it's, it's part of our feelings. And I see, I personalize it because it's part of my feelings as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. The inability to see things, you know, with a different view, a business view, a business interview. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Another issue is the fact that for a long time, I didn't see the legal profession as a business. I just saw it as a core profession. Hmm. But it's, it's a good thing that I'm still young and I've been able to correct that, you know, in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. it, I, know, I now know that it's strictly law business. It's no longer law profession. Hmm. So while I was still holding on to the fact that, oh, it's strictly law profession, I see that as a feeling. How would you describe your leadership style? My leadership style is an all-encompassing style. You bring human face to leadership. While I was working in other law firms or other organizations, I realized that employees are seen as tools. Employees are viewed as tools in human endeavors. But in my personal style, I'm leaving to correct that impression or that notion. Employees are stakeholders. So I, my leadership style is engaging. Mm -hmm. I engage my employees. I engage my lawyers. Mm -hmm. I let them know that the business is theirs as well. What values are important to you and your firm? The values of integrity. Mm -hmm the values of maintaining a high level of reputation, the values of 
keeping your game tight, ensuring that there are no let ups. You can't do things the way others are doing things. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Integrity, that I mentioned first, is so important because we are at a stage in this country where the moment you hear lawyer, the average Nigerian will just say, no, he's, that's it. <laughs> one of them, one of the people destroying the country. <laughs> so it's important that as a law firm, you maintain a high level of integrity. This is Under 40 CEOs. Now, definitely to build a transgenerational business, you must um, have certain structures in place as a business. Now, what is the current um, business structure of your firm? Well, the structure we have at the moment is a structure that we, as a firm, the structure we took over from my parents. The structure of a sole proprietorship. But the structure we're moving into is a structure of a proper partnership. In 2019, the firm Oguntoye and Oguntoye will be 70 years. Now, how do you plan to celebrate this milestone and where would you want to have taken this company by then? Um, it's interesting that you noted that. <laughs> by 2019, the law firm of Ogunte and Ogunte would have been in existence for 70 years. We intend to make some noise. Like they say, in the younger generation would say, <laughs> let's make some noise. But the noise we intend to make, it's, it's a coordinated noise. It's a educative noise. We intend to let people know that it's possible for businesses that promote intellectual service to run from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. We intend to have a sort of awareness of bringing in organizations outside of Nigeria that have been in existence for over 100 years. Mm -hmm for over 150 years. We intend to bring them in here to tell us what are the things they're doing right. How can we learn from them? How can we learn from their achievements? Because there are law firms outside of Nigeria that have been in existence for over 150 years. So we, need, we intend to bring them here to tell us the things they're doing right so that we can learn from them milestone that we intend to reach before 2019 is one of the things I've touched on earlier. We intend to have a law firm that can be called a proper partnership. We intend to have a multi-jurisdictional law firm. This is Under 40 CEOs. How does this learned gentleman spend his spare time? What does he love to eat? What does he drive? Who are his mentors? I must find out. Now I have a few quick fire questions for you. Yes, please. Are you ready? Yes. What do you love to eat? Pounded yam and a 40 roll. How would you describe your style? Simple. S simplicity. What are the CEOs do you currently look up to? I look up to Midway, Ashon, CEO, Oye, Azan Odukale. Hmm. Amazing. What are your favorite brands to wear? I just keep it simple. Whatever makes me comfortable. Yeah. What's your favorite car to drive? The car to drive, it has to be Mercedes. <laughs> What's your favorite travel destination? My travel destination is going to be United States of America any day. This is Under 40 CEOs. Your favorite book of all time? I love autobiographies because they inspire. What book are you reading right now? I'm reading a book called People First, Profit Second. Amazing. Now lastly, I'd like to know what makes you happy? What makes me happy? <laughs> Seeing others happy. That's it for me. Thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs. I'd be able to eat. It's my pleasure anytime. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. <laughs>